Hello and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to talk about how you can promote Azure Data Factory from development environment to your QA environment using Azure DevOps. Let me set up what exactly we're going to try to do. So I have a data factory in dev called temp dev KB. And then I have a data factory in QA environment, uh, temp de temp uh, ADF QA. And uh, in this data factory, we have two sources. We have a source for um, blob storage, which is where my source and uh, sync data sets are. And also we're using Key Vault. And our QA data factory will end up being set up exactly the same way, Key Vault and storage. And then we also want to move all of the objects from dev to QA. And the technology we're going to be using is DevOps, pipeline, and release management there. So we're going to be setting up CI CD in DevOps. So this is a level 100 tutorial. I don't expect you to know much about DevOps or anything like that. Uh, some familiarity with DevOps. Uh, I assume that you know how to connect to it, how to log in, how to create a project, and how to kind of navigate through it a little bit. But you by no means are expected to be an expert. So as I said, in terms of my linked services, I have only two. I have Blob Storage and I have a Key Vault. And I need a Key Vault because when I create Blob Storage, I'm actually looking up the key to connect to the uh, to the Blob using Key Vault. So in the Key Vault, I have an entry for the key. I look that thing up when I set up my Blob Storage. In terms of the data factory artifacts, I have my source data set. The source data set is just going to look into the test folder in my temp container in blob storage. And then I could click on preview data and it'll find some data in that folder. So you could see that we have some cells data in that folder. And when the pipeline runs, I wanna copy that file from my test folder into whichever folder I specify my parameters. So here it goes to dev um, and I'm actually doing some further modifications within my pipeline. So then in my pipeline, uh, what I do is I have a copy data activity. And in here I have very simple thing going on. I just have a um, source data set that I'm using the wildcard that's going to connect to my temp and copy all of the fo files from that folder. And all of them are going to go into a folder name that I specify in my pipeline parameters, which is here dev. So a very simple activity, copy from source, dump it into sync, and that's about it. Now let's take a look at DevOps and see how our CI CD pipeline is actually set up. So the first thing that you will need to do in DevOps is to create a project. And when you create a project, you need to create a repo. So uh, by default, it'll create a main and you just need to initialize it. And then you can come in here and you can uh, create new branches uh, once you have the repo set up. And uh, normally what I do is I create a development branch and then data factory will actually create ADF publish branch for you. You don't have to do anything for this. So all I do is I create a development branch and that's where my development will take place. The next thing that you want to do is you want to go into your development data factory, go to source control and configure Git configuration. So basically, as you go, it's it's a kind of a wizard driven process. You just need to go and click on the drop downs. All you want to do is make sure that your collaboration branch is, uh, in my case, is development, whatever it is that you want to use. And then the publish branch is use the default one, which for data factory is ADF underscore publish. What this will do is when you hit publish in here, what will happen is uh, it'll take all of the artifacts and all of the stuff that's happening in Data Factory and it'll publish it into your DevOps branches. So if I go to my branches and I pick my ADF publish, you see that this is my Dev Data Factory. And here I'm going to have a bunch of things. And also I will have uh, two files ARM template for factory and ARM template parameters. Once your repo is created and once you've created the branches and once you've configured your dev data factory to connect to DevOps for source management, then you're ready to start deploying. So you just need to make sure that from your dev 
data factory, you hit publish to make sure that all of your artifacts, all of the latest things have been published in DevOps. So once you have configured your DevOps connectivity, and once you see uh, ADF publish branch in DevOps, and once you see your uh, temp ARM template and parameter files uh, published here, then you know that uh, you should be good. And now you can actually work on the actual deployment. So the way the deployment takes place is it's a two-step process. You could do it in one, but I recommend doing it in two. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to create a pipeline. So you can just click here, new pipeline. So I'm going to just uh, uh, go through this with you. So you create a new pipeline and then you click use the classic editor. And now you have an option uh, for the next step. So first you want to pick Azure repos Git as a source. Then you select the project. In my case, it's called temp. Then you select the repository. In my case, it's also temp. And then you pick the branch. So don't forget that our branch is ADF publish and you click continue. The next step is you need to click on empty job. So you click on empty job. And then in the empty, empty job, you got to click on this plus sign here to add a new task. And then here in the add a new task, you type ARM and you will see that ARM template deployment option will go up, come up and you can just click on add. And now we need to configure our ARM deployment settings. So uh, let's go through all the options. The first one here, it says resource deployment scope. We're going to pick resource group. The next one is uh, which uh, subscription you're going to use. So I'm going to pick mine and uh, you're going to pick the subscription again. And then you're going to pick action. So we're going to just uh, use create or update the resource group. You pick the resource group and the resource group you pick is the one in which you would like it to deploy to. So in my case, I'm going to say temp resource group QA and you specify the location. In my case, it's central US. Then you have to specify the template and template parameters. So the template will be the ARM template for JSON file. The template parameters will be the other file, the parameters file. So it'll say template parameters for factory. And now is the most important step because our environments are not the same. So you will have things like uh, keys to be different. The name of the data factory is going to be different from dev to QA. Uh, the URL for the key vault will be different. So what you want to do is you want to click on override uh, template parameters. And then in here, you can come in and make changes to what will be different between the two environments. So for example, my data factory name is going to be different. So instead of saying dev, I'm going to say QA. My key vault properties will be different. Instead of dev, it's going to be QA. And then in blob, blob storage connection string, you can actually go into your blob storage. And then in an the area where you could see the keys, you could see two things. You can see the key or connection string. So you can take the connection string for your QA blob storage and paste it in here. All other options, you can leave the same. One thing that you may want to do is consider whether you would like this pipeline to be triggered every time your publish took place. So every time you publish, you deploy new things into development branch. You want those new things to be picked up and, and deployed to QA. So if that's what you want to do, you got to click on triggers. Then you got to click on enable continuous integration. And what this will do, it will actually run this pipeline every time you publish something from data factory. Once you're done, you click save and queue. And if you're lucky, uh, everything will just run. Uh, the agent will run, the pipeline will run. It'll go through the deployment steps. And uh, if everything is good, you're gonna see a green check, check, check icon uh, indicating that the pipeline ran very well. So here's my pipeline that I already created. I can see my runs and I see my stages and I see this green, green check boxes telling me that everything's okay. And I actually had to fix a few things early on. And that's why my earlier jobs actually failed. Once my pipeline is created, then I can go and create a release. And I can create a release here. And then uh, I'm just going to edit the one I already have. 
And then when you create a new release, you will have two boxes. You will have an artifact side on the left and stages on the right. So when you create a new artifact, so if there's nothing here, you say add, and you just basically pick the pipeline that you would like to be uh, run here. Now I already have it here, so it's complaining, but that's basically how you do it. So, and then one more thing you wanna do is you wanna check here, click on this icon, continuous deployment trigger, and make sure that it's enabled. So this will make sure that your pipeline actually is released and uh, actually propagated into the QA environment. And then for the stages, what you will need to do is you just need to add an empty job and then just specify the stage in my stage QA and that's about it. So you don't have to do anything on this side, anything crazy. So once that's done, um, you will be able to set up all of the steps. So here I have an artifact and one job and the job will be just to deploy this artifact. Now that we have everything set up, let's see if our CI CD process is actually working. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my dev and I'm gonna rename this copy activity from saying copy this to copy that. And now I'm gonna save this and I'm going to publish this. So I'm publishing it, it says, okay, I'm gonna be publishing it. This is the only thing that's changed. I'm gonna say, okay. And um, it says it's publishing, publishing is completed. Now, if I come back in here, uh, I'm gonna just refresh this page. And what I should see is a new deployment, right? So it detected that the new stuff got published into development branch and the ADF publish branch. So now what it's doing is you see this blue icon. So it's deploying the, it's creating the new pipeline and it's creating the new ARM template and basically creating all the artifacts that will be released into QA. So once this is done, we'll be able to go to the releases and see a new release being triggered. And um, we will see uh, a new line. So right now the latest one is release six. Once this pipeline stuff is done, uh, let's see, so it's still running. I could click here and then it'll kind of give me all of the steps of what's happening. And then uh, first it does the checkout, then it's gonna do the deployment. And then when all of these are green and everything is done, it'll be ready to be released. So a few seconds have gone by. So you see it took 47 seconds to create the ARM template deployment and then it's doing the checks, but uh, it's pretty much done. So if I come here into my uh, pipelines and runs, uh, you will see that this is done and it took one minute and 12 seconds to do this. And if I go to releases, you see that release seven is now in place. It took place just now. And then if I go to my QA data factory um, and I refresh, now it says copy that, which is the same as what I had in my development data factory. So thank you for stopping by. If you enjoyed this video, please uh, like and subscribe. And if you have any other topics that you think would be helpful for me to cover in future videos, uh, please leave a comment below. Thank you, bye.